magnitude of the miracle. Wow. So what happened? In the late 60s, early 70s, there was a movement birthed in America called the Word of Faith Movement. And teachers and pastors start teaching us about faith and our words and believing God. Watch what was happening. God knew what He was doing. He was increasing the water level for a third day manifestation. Yeah. Filling us up. Filling us up. Listen, yeah. back in them days, I'd go, I'd wait all year and I'd go sit at Copeland's Believers Convention in Fort Worth. I'd take my vacation to go to a conference. Uh, and I would get as close as I could to the front and put my Bible there because if I had to go for a break or eat lunch, I didn't want no one to take my place because I wanted to be as close as I could get to that word. Now we show up late, sit on the back. Are you on the back? Don't, I'm, I'm, you're on the back here because there's no room. Well, you're okay. <laughs> we would use vacation time. Go sit under the word. Come on. Come on, Apostle. Come on. So she looks at him, and the Bible says, Here's six water pots. Watch this. And there were six clay pots of stone. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing each three firkins apiece, so they had a little bit of level of water in each one of them. Now watch what Jesus says in verse 7. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. In the original language it says fill them till they overflow. Church, we would be extremely selfish if we only come to church to get filled up to the point that it's filled up to the rim or to the brim and we're content with that because then it makes it all about you and I. But He wants to fill us up to the point where what you have in you overflows with people that need it. So what does it say? It said, fill the water pots to overflowing. And they filled them to the brim, which means to the point they overflowed. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus does something that grabbed my attention. Mm -hmm. Look what it says. He says to the people, draw out now and bear to the governor of the feast. Now, I thought that was interesting. Jesus didn't say draw it out and let the people taste it first. Right. Right. He said draw it out and let the governor of the feast taste it. Come on. Right. But then I went and found out what governor of the feast was. The governor of the feast in Bible days, watch this, was called the superintendent of the kitchen. Which was what? The person who went into the kitchen and prepared all the different foods and got them ready to feed the people. Right. And the superintendent of the kitchen, who's a good chef, is going to taste what he or she is preparing to make sure it's good to give to the people. So all of a sudden, I saw this prophetically. He doesn't give it to the people first. He gives it to the ministers. Watch this. Most of them with an old mindset that don't believe in miracles anymore. They don't believe in tongues. They don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. But in the third day, God's going to cause some Holy Ghost drunks to hit evangelical churches. Don't tell me he don't have a sense of humor. Uh, how many believe he got a sense of humor? I'll give you a perfect example. How many of y'all got kids? Mom and daddy, watch this. When my boys was growing up, and they were being good boys, that's my boys. That's my son. They get in trouble. I said, Mama, go take care of your kids. Do you know God did the same thing? God was telling Moses all the time, that's my people, that's my kids. And he, they got down there and messed it up. He said, Moses, go take care of your people. Come on, he did. Go take care of your people. So the governor of the feast is men and women of ministry and calling and gifts. We taste and we prepare the meal to serve it. 
But then this is where it got really interesting, so prophetic. It said a governor of a feast would serve a meal in three courses on three different places of city. And then I got to thinking, wait, 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 God is all about threes. God the Father, Jesus the Son, the Holy Ghost, Spirit, Soul, and Body, Outer Court, Holy Place, Holy of Holies, 30, 60, 100-fold, Prophet, Priest, King, Good, Acceptable, Perfect. And then I got to see it. The first course in day one was on justification. And that's what the governors was serving the people. We moved into the second phase of glory and we started teaching on being justified by faith. And listen, first day had a glory. The second day had a glory. But we now in the third day were removed from justification to glorification. And now the men and women of God are understanding who's in us and what's in us. And we're releasing that. The cork has been popped. Because this will mess you up. It went in water. Right, come on. Wow. It came out water. Yeah. So what I'm doing tonight is I opened up your womb and I'm putting water in. Yeah. It's going to go in water. But when you need a manifestation and you open your mouth, it's going to come out water. It's going to come out gifting. It's going to come out manifestation. All of a sudden, the government the governor stops the whole celebration. He says, wait, 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 wait. Something ain't right here. He said, everybody knows. When you start throwing a party, you bring out the good stuff first. And you give it to them. And then when they got their buzz on, you bring in the cheap stuff and they're so buzzed they don't know the difference. So God reversed the order in the kingdom. He said, I'm going to let you give two days of your wine, what you said is me, but it's made out of your own ability. And it's going to take a third day wine to wake up a lethargy people. Third day. What day were you in church? Third day. This is just one little chapter out of my book back there on the mm -hmm. third day. Listen, I told you yesterday, y'all got laughing with me, but when Joshua got up to move the people into, across the Jordan, it was the third day. Mm -hmm. So there is a movement happening in the third day moving us from out of our wilderness, out of our discouragement, into the promise and the prophecy that God's given you. And can I help you? Wilderness is not punishment from God. Come on, man. The wilderness was never punishment from God. The wilderness was designed by God just as a transitional season to move. They'd already been out of Egypt. Now He's trying to get Egypt out of them because Egypt has no place in your destiny. So the problem was many of their mindset couldn't see the new thing, wouldn't see the new thing because all they saw was the leek and the garlic and the onions. They forgot about their kids. Their, their, their wives were raped and murdered and killed and beaten. All they think about was food. So I am thinking about that a little bit right now. We're in the third day church. You remember this? Jesus rose on what day? What's your Bible say? He's walking on the road to Emmaus. Come on. On the third day. Mm -hmm. What day are we in church? Third day. And watch this. All of a sudden, he comes up on two guys having a conversation. Uh -huh. yeah. He walks up alongside and says, What's up, God? What you doing? Watch this. Haven't you heard? Yeah, yeah. And if you'll read the story in that chapter, until Jesus showed up, all they talked about is what had happened. Right. Come on. So when something new was happening in their presence, their old conversation was an old mindset which would not let them see the miracle right there with them. That's right. That's good. That's true. So he starts walking and talking. Next time I come back, I'll teach this. I'll give you a nugget right now. 
How many know Moses went up and talked to God more than one time? Mm -hmm. Yes. Did he? Yes. No? First time he goes up there, gets the law, finger God writes it all out, gives him the law. Moses don't even get down to the bottom of the mountain. And folk already broke it. Yes. Remember the story? Right. He gets mad, breaks it. God says, Mo. On, Back up, boy. Come on. <laughs> now here's the cool thing. Because it's a type of child. The first time Moses is up with God, all that God talked about was the law. Yes, yes, yes. And the, what he proved already in an Old Testament type was nobody could keep it. Yes. That's right. It was no sooner written and it was broken. Yes. When he calls Moses up the second time, go read it. Their whole conversation changed. Yes. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Moses starts saying, God, have I found mercy in your sight? Yeah. God, talk to me about grace. Come talk on. to me about mercy. Yeah. Now watch this. He rewrote the law, but the conversation was about mercy and grace. When he was up getting the law and coming down from the mountain with only the law, they didn't need to veil him. So the second time up there, he got something he didn't get the first time because it was so overpowering when he came down, they had to cover him because they couldn't receive or handle it yet. Yes, yes. But can I help you? It ain't veiled no more. Oh, right. The in Christ's message and the salvation of humanity removed the veil. Matter of fact, when Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible said that in Herod's temple, the veil that separated man from God, watch this, it didn't say it was torn from the bottom up. It said it was torn from the top down, signifying the work of God, not man. And it was 60 foot tall and 4 inches thick. 60 is the number of pride. 4 is the number of humanity. He said it's the hum pride of man that has brought separation from me. But I'm going to sever that thing. And I'm not going to visit them. I'm going to habitate with them. Yes. 